Welcome back. So coming up on this week's Country File, Stephen visits the Royal Lanks show, talks about the advantages of having a vet student on placement, and Angela visits a, a dairy farm that's done a little bit of diversification into adding value, Bidley Dairy. So before that, let's just have a quick look at this barley. So you obviously saw it last week. Now, can you see that? We've actually got whiskers pointing out of it. So that's now starting to fill the seed head with barley. So like every week, does anyone want to guess the harvest date? I think it's going to be quicker than people think. Over to Angela. Today, I've come to film at Bidlier Dairy, the home of Ray and Jill Brown and their family. They milk just over 300 cows here, but they've invested a great deal into a diversification project of a um, farmyard cafe, ice cream shop and milk vending machine. So the cows actually get milked here in the farmyard, but the production and the milk uh, is actually sent across the road with pipes. Right, so we've actually crossed over the road now from the main farmyard and uh, we can see that the milk has actually been transported across the road and into this big shed here. So, uh, so Ray, tell, tell us what's happening in the shed now with the milk. OK, so uh, as you say, the, the pipeline actually goes way above uh, uh, all the other uh, cables and things, so it's, uh, it's not going to be caught by anything, but it goes back 140 metres back to the parlour. And uh, it's insulated. Uh, there's two pipes in that channel, and it uh, it takes four and a half minutes for it to go from the milking parlour to the tank here. So uh, I start milking at quarter to three in the morning, and when I've milked a few rows of cows, I turn the pump on, give a young girl uh, a call that uh, lives above the dairy here, and she. Um, comes downstairs, she's got four and a half minutes to get changed and get downstairs and connect the pipe up, otherwise there's a big puddle of milk on the floor. And what sort of quantity are you bringing across in these pipes each time? So we milk about uh, 200, 280 to 300 cows. We're trying to keep it below 300 if we can, but it does just edge it over 300 cows. And, um, and so we pump... Uh, 10,000 litres a day over here, just a bit over probably. And is, is that all the milk that you produce all comes into this here? It all comes over here, here yeah. 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 Okay, right. Well, shall we take a look inside? Sounds a good idea. Each of these tanks hold 20,000 litres. So 20,000 litres in each of these tanks. And, tank. and why are the two? Is it just because you can't get a 40,000 litre tank or something, or why? It's, uh, it's just convenience, really, of being able to split the milk if, uh, if for some reason, we, there's a, we need to hold milk back over Christmas or something like that. Um, it just gives us more flexibility, really. And what proportion of the milk is made into ice cream compared with what goes in the vending machine? It's mostly for uh, pro processed milk for um, farm shops and uh, um, food service companies and there's a few people that are doing milk rounds that uh, buy milk offers as well. Right, OK, so, um, so it's a big sort of bulk selling yeah, setup. Yeah, so that's the bulk of it. Yeah. Okay, so the milk's coming along these pipes here in the wall and we've got a a valve that we can either choose to decide to put the milk into bottles, into the uh, production line, or it actually carries on through this wall, through this hole, and then into the vending machine. That's it. So, and this is where the milk from the, the bulk tanks ends up in these vending machines. So, uh, so yeah, so are you, are you pleased, Ray, with how these operate? I'm very pleased. It's worked out very well. This is a new idea, actually, when we... Um when we were thinking about vending machines, I wanted to be able to have the, uh, the milk in bigger tanks so we didn't have the problem of the tanks running out through the night or anything. So we've got bulk tanks, two 2,000 litre bulk tanks behind here. And, um, and it keeps it nice and cold and fresh. Uh, the beauty is there's no waste whatsoever. So um, 
the milk comes straight through from the cow it never sees the light of day until it comes out into the customer's bottle uh, when they bring the bottle to fill up with milk or get themselves a milkshake so it's very very efficient and uh, very uh, environmentally friendly and we're actually in the shadow here of Jodrell Bank the uh, world famous telescope so if you fancy having a day out doing some stargazing then uh, this is the place to come for your snacks afterwards well, all it remains for me to say is that I've eaten my ice cream and it was absolutely lovely so if you're ever passing Bidlia Dairy here and it's a nice sunny day or even not a nice sunny day then uh, then yeah call in have an ice cream and check out the vending machine and um, yeah you, you'll certainly give yourself a pat on the back for having something that has Absolutely. Well, I was going to say no food miles. We've probably got to about two metres of food <laughs> miles. And, um, and yeah, it's uh, good for the environment overall. So uh, hopefully that's inspired some of you to have some kind of uh, thoughts about your own diversification projects in the future as well. Thanks for that, Angela. Let's see how Stephen's getting on. Well, we're at the Royal Lancashire Show with the top man, Nick uh, Padgett. Nick, looks like a good number of, uh, of, uh, of entries this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're reaching 800 plus this year, so we're proud, you know, we're, each year we're growing, so it's definitely improving. Definitely. Lots of uh, lots of different breeds around us. And you uh, you farm yourself, Nick, don't you? You're, uh, yeah, on the, yeah. The, the committee here is now the agricultural side, all the livestock, all farmers, have Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Very strong committee now of farmers. And what uh, where about do you farm? What what have you got in your on your farm? I uh, I'm from I go over Kirkham Way with my girlfriend, well fiance now. Yeah, so we uh, proposed to her at the show. Yes, yesterday morning. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, we breed pedigree Leicesters, Kerry Hills and Gritstons and then we run a few commercials on as well for the fat lambs. And how's the state for you at the minute? How's things looking? Are you positive? Is it is it tough times? Has it been? I think I think we just have to keep trying. You know, I mean, if you, you give up, it, there's no point in keeping going, is there? You know, um, money is te you know things are costing a lot more money now, but the the land prices are up and the coal you prices are up, so it should uh, weigh each other out. So optimistic. Yeah, but we'll see how we get on. If anyone were thinking of getting into sheep farming, well, you don't hear many starting up in sheep farming. <laughs> What advice would you give them right now with the economic climate? Oh, don't bother. <laughs> no. Hey, you, you want to start, at, the best sheep I would suggest would be a mule, you know, they're great mothers. If you want to get into breeding your fat lambs, you know, they're good mothers, great on the feet. Rear two lambs, no problem whatsoever. And, and they finish, the lambs finish well off grass. Yeah, definitely. Good advice. And Nick, we'll, uh, oh, we're just getting bumped along here. Uh, congratulations on a fantastic uh, Royal Lancashire Agricultural Show, mate. Thank and you. We'll, we'll maybe come along and catch you on the farm. Is that all right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Cheers, mate. Thank you. So on this week's The Real Country File, we've come to see a trainee vet. Yep. Is, that, is that the right? Is that yeah, right? it is, yeah. Katie Wilder, and find out what she's doing down here uh, on the farm as part of her degree course. Katie, tell me a little bit about yourself and then about your course that you're on then. So I'm from Manchester originally, but moved to Garstang quite recently. Um, I've been on my course for three years, but I also did a year zero to get into uni um, because my grades weren't amazing, but I still wanted to be a vet. I've wanted to be a vet since I was about five years old. My nana always tells me that's what I told her, so I've never really known anything else. Um, I've just finished like my pre-clinical years at uni, so that's all your lecture-based stuff. And I'm going on to fourth year where I'll be doing like clinical, where I'll be doing rotations, be more handling animals, learning the proper stuff to be a vet. Did, and, and what is it predominantly farm animals that you want to be working with when you're qualified? Um, I think for now, I my, my idea is mixed, so a bit of everything because I kind of enjoy everything. But I think rotations is really where you make your mind up because you do all the different animals and all different aspects, and then you decide then what you're going to do. Kind of thing. But for now, it's mixed, so I want a bit of everything involved. And, and what is it you've been doing here on on the farm? Um, so I've been coming in the mornings, doing the morning milking with Ian and then coming over to the calving shed, feeding the calves the milk, 
checking the straw and then giving them the water as well. And some of them are not, they've only just recently been carved, so they're not used to drinking from a bucket yet. So just giving them a helping hand just to get them on the way. It's really interesting that, because I didn't know that, it, you know, um, what, well, what is it, what's your degree in for a start? So veterinary medicine. Right, so you will end up being a vet. Yeah. And I didn't know that vets would actually come and milk, for instance, yeah, on a yeah. farm, you know. So by our CBS standards, which is like the accreditation board, you have to do so many preclinical crap, um, like placements and then clinical placements. So you preclinical are like husbandry, so milking, lambing, poultry, pigs, dogs, like in catteries and kennels. So you get to see like both sides of it and it's nice to do. You mentioned there that your grades weren't what you, you yeah. wanted them to be. Um, I was talking just this week with um, UCLAN, University of Central oh, yeah, Lancashire. Oh, got a new vet school coming New along, vet yeah. school coming And they were talking about trying to maybe not have it as three A's to yeah. get in. Because it's really tough, isn't it? Yeah, and, and yeah. Got levels are a tough time, especially when you're 17, 18. You're still figuring yourself out and you're trying to do your A-levels. And it's, it's a lot. So I did like an access course, so I didn't have to get such a high grade. But then it still got me onto the degree I wanted to be on. Um, and I think that's so, so good for everyone because people go through stuff in life and it's never straightforward. So to have that option makes a lot of sense. And, and if people are listening now and thinking, you know, that might be, be them that they're thinking about taking that degree or someone that they know, would, would, you, would you advise that additional kind of year then to Yeah, because it's kind of just like an extra year of A-level stuff. Like you're just learning about science-based things. But it kind of eases you into university life because you're still at uni you maybe have moved away from home but it kind of eases you in rather than just doing an intense course straight out of a levels so you go from one intense thing to the next so it's kind of nice to have that balance and in terms of working on the farm then you've you've how long you've been on 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 this farm uh, only since yesterday so oh right, actually yeah, brand yeah. new yeah, brand yeah. New story. have you milked before no i have it's my first time with milking and stuff i've seen they with like calves and stuff before but first time milking and what did you make a milking then oh i love it I love yeah. being around cows. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll probably go a long way then in uh, yeah. in this game, won't you? Well, listen, Katie, we'll have a we'll have a chat with Ian, but yep. um, appreciate. We'll try and catch up with you in the next yep. few months. Is yeah, that I'm all right? To see and, again, yeah. Yeah, see how you're getting on. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much. Cheers. So with Ian Pie, Ian, this is your farm. You've got yeah. Katie on as uh, as a trainee vet, yeah. as a yeah. vet student yeah. vet. Yeah. Well, where have you got? Where have you got a student coming up for? What, what's the what? Oh, we've done it for about ten years and just had some really good experiences with them. We've had some absolutely superb vets students over the years, and it's just a good way of like we block calves, so we try and carve everything all at once. So we've just got that extra lift where we just need that extra lift in labour and just looking after calves and just helping milking and stuff. Vet can a vet student can just slot in perfectly, uh, and, and they they learn. You know, we put jobs aside beforehand so that when they come, there is things that they can see foot trimming and uh, yawn is testing and things like that. And we'll put the vet, we'll get the vet to come in a day with them as well, our proper vet. So so they get to learn as well off the vet on the farm, the kind of things they should be yeah, looking out for. Yeah, right? and then it's good for us. You know, we're learning stuff off them. Um, the, f the students that we've had from North America have been superb. They have a different way of doing vet school which okay. is better than the UK okay. way. Um, they train either into small animal or large animal and then do a conversion course. Whereas here, they're trying to get vets to, vet students to like learn everything all at once. But what we know about animals now is so much more. They're trying to cram it in and probably not teach them properly, in my opinion. Whereas the ones that come from foreign countries where they do a conversion, they are fully clued up on their specialism already. You know, it's a bit like trying to train a musician to learn every musical instrument. It's just not possible. So, so you, you say foreign countries then, so not just North America then, where do you get... Uh, we've rescued? had France, we've had Israel, uh, we've had Canada, uh, where else? Um, I think we've had a German. I've lost track really. But it's quite good because our kids are learning off them. Our kids, like the world has come to our kids, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that... It's absolutely fantastic. But uh, like I said, uh, the UK students are good. But the ones that have come from North America have been superb, literally superb. And Katie's just started this week, and yeah. first day she's milking. And yeah, milk she's milking. Water. I know she's, she's taken to it like a duck to water. She's been really good, uh, and she's keen. Um, and to be fair, it's funny when you just watch, watching students, you can tell what they're going to be like as a vet. And she's doing stuff without even asking it, without even asking her. 
she uh, picks it up. And it, how long will she be with you? Uh, she'll be here a fortnight. Right, um, so just a couple Yeah, because they do a couple of weeks, then they got to do lamb and a couple of weeks with pigs and everything else. But I mean, I, it's not just me exploiting free labour. There's, <laughs> right, okay. there's a bit of effort to go into it. You know, you've got to clear it with your insurance. And the first thing she'll do when she comes here is we've got a health and safety pack, read through that, go around the farm with them. Uh, and then, like I said, there's a bit of prep in putting jobs to one side. But to be fair, you actually get a good feel of what a person's like just off the emails when they're getting in touch okay. with you. The ones that email you straight away and just say, what are my days off? Yeah, you know, yeah. that is a bad start. What time start. do I finish? Yeah, that what, is a bad finish? start. Because I just think you've got this fantastic opportunity. Because yeah. I mean, this is one of the... It's not a big farm, this farm. It's an easy farm. So if you're going to struggle here, you will struggle as a vet. And if other farmers are thinking, hey, we, we could give an opportunity to... Oh, them, honestly, do, do it. get involved? Do what it. do they have to do? Uh, if they get in touch with the universities and just go on a... Like a they've got like an emailing list. Uh, well, not an emailing list, like a farm list. And then uh, if they put on there what they are and then the students will get in touch with them. I've got to the point where I've had to come off the list because we were getting contacted that much. Okay. But then that's nice because then we're in the, the good groove of vet students telling other vet students, telling other vet students, well, you know, we're the good guys to come and visit. Great stuff. Well, thanks for your time, mate. No problem. Always a pleasure. That's about it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. As ever, get in touch if you've got any stories you want us to cover and we'll see if we can get down there or maybe you could send us some content. Anyway... If you made it this far, click like and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.